Recording in progress. Well, <laughs> so we have today Paline, uh, who is uh, a second year PhD student, and he will speak about forecasting emergency department visits in Sonest Office Hospital. Okay. Hi. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, forecasting emergency department visits in Sonest Office Hospital. Non-time series model that strongly relies on external information, which are calendar data, 
and the resident population uh, because we have this light growth over time so we need to encode it and the thing that grows like that is the population i mean the reason for this light growth is the growing population in mallorca and we will also include weather so we'll use these emojis for calendar weather and present population data and we also use weather because it's used widely in this kind of literature so we will check if it's relevant or not for our study also because i mean the summer piece can you can uh, especially be predicted with the weather and of course we have an extra variable which is typical of mallorca which are tourists that apparently uh, according to the media here seems to cause a lot of damage to the emergency department uh, since we also have the area of Magaluf in the hospital area. And uh, at the point that balcony is now an official word in the Spanish dictionary. And so we will have this additional variable that is not present in any other study of this kind, which are tourists, to see how important it is to give this, uh, to the model information about how many tourists are coming. So now we start looking at how we uh, organize these external variables for the model. Okay, first we have calendar variables, which is basically the day of the week, the day of the month, the month, and this holiday big string, which is basically um, a zero one string that tells us if the day around the predictor day, uh, the dates around the predictor day are a holiday or not. So, for example, if we have the 27th of December 2023, it's a Thursday, 27th December, and <coughs> this is the 27th, which is not a holiday, but 5, 25, and 26 are a holiday. 30, I mean, 28 is not a holiday, but 29 is the Saturday, so it's a holiday. So this is how we give the input to the model. And then we have the weather variables, which are basically temperature, precipitation level, and wind speed. An important thing is that we use real condition, we don't use forecast. Because for the sake of making the model, it's irrelevant, because if we use prediction, then we have, okay, if we use a real condition, it's like, okay, this is the input for the model, this is the prediction. If we use forecast, it's the same, but then we have to add the propagation error that is related to the forecast we are using. So to understand if the variable is relevant or not, we will just use the real condition. And then if it's relevant, we will just propagate an extra error for the forecast. Then we have population variables, which is resident population and tourists. And resident population is divided depending on the age. So we have this fancy plot here that shows that every, I mean, each different color varies the the age and then the, the growth over time so then we see that the population has this light growth in almost every bar while the tourists have strongly oscillational which is the plot on the right have strong a uh, strongly seasonal oscillation and of course i mean these two are excluded because they're again the pandemic one and okay i mean the tourists okay this is not technically the real number it's more like the visits and both of the data are interpolated to have a day-by-day -day resolution because the they have a monthly resolution in the origin, I mean, originally. Before defining our model, we then define a baseline model, which is a um, naive model that should get like the, um, I mean, uh, a basic uh, performance measure to understand how good is our model. And the baseline model is defined by this simple statement so that for any given month, we create a shift, then this model uses the average of the previous year the i mean of any previous year tuple that has the same month day, month week day and shift to predict the future one so for example if we, again we have the 27th of december to be predicted which is a thursday then the naive uh, the baseline model will take all the thursday of december in these years and average them and give the prediction <coughs> for for any other models of course we don't have that we just have that we split randomly the data into a training set and a test set so 75 is used to train the model and 25 to actually measure the performance. Okay, this is the first of the model field is a random forest. The random forests are a very typical and basic machine learning algorithm that basically use, uh, I mean, they use decision trees that are made, I mean, built during the, the training part. And then during the test part, the data flows to the, inside the tree and then it flows through the tree and then it gets a result. And then the average over all the trees is the predicted result for the random forest. Then we have the super vector regressor, which is the, the continuous version of a super vector machine, uh, which can be, I mean, I give a quick explanation because I, I mean, I don't have enough time to explain it fully. It's, it can be seen as a very fancy version of just a linear regressor. regressor. So we have that first it makes the data linear by using the kernel tricks, so projecting into a higher dimensional space that makes the data linear. 
And then it is a classification problem. So simple vector machine it draws a hyperplane to classify the data. Since we're using the regressor because we want the continuous output, the hyperplane itself is the prediction in this kind of space. And then we have that our third model is a people neural, neural network, which is the most simple type of neural network, and also called for that reason the vanilla neural network, uh, which is basically a um, simple neural network where the data goes from the input layer to the output layer. And I mean, it's not a recurrent one, so it doesn't use previous steps because it's not a time series, time series model. And during the training part, you have the adjusting of either parameters to back propagation. And we use, I mean, this specific tier for the, for the network. So um, quite, I mean, for this kind of data, it's a big one. And then for every of these three models, we give four different combinations of the, of the input variables. So all the variables, calendar, residence, weather, tourist, all without weather, all without tourist, and all without weather and tourist. This way, we, we want to measure how the performance changes when ex excluding these variables to understand how actually are they relevant for the model. So if they're if they are relevant, we expect the performance of this one to be to, to be much better than the other ones. To measure the performance, we use the mapper, which is the mean absolute percentage error, which is I mean quite self-explanatory, literally that. But of course, not measured over all the points, but just on a test data set. And yi, yi is the real value, and yi hat is the predicted value. And these are the results for all the models. Okay, now I'll <laughs> explain this table. Okay, so this is, I mean, the results have been interpreted for each sheet. So VL is the baseline performance, which is the mapper, and a lower mapper is a better model, first information. So uh, of course, we have that the baseline is worse than all the other models. These lines are the different inputs, and these are the three models. So, okay, the first thing that we notice is that, of course, I mean, the baseline in each shift is worse, but we can see that the night shift, on average, is predicted worse than the morning shift, and the afternoon is kind of in the middle. This is because of the number of people inside every shift, because machine learning algorithms work better with higher numbers, and the night shift has a lot of lower numbers, so it, it kind of has a lower resolution for the machine learning algorithm, so it, the model performs worse, but still better than the baseline, so it's okay. And then we can see that the random forest is on average better than the others, so amongst the three machine learning algorithms, we will, pick, we will choose the random forest. But then it's a bit more complex to understand which input is better. Because, for example, for the I mean, for the afternoon, it seems that it's directly better to not use uh, calendar and weather. But if we go to the morning shift, uh, the, I mean, the one with all the variables is a bit better. And the same can be seen in the night. But now the real question is this, is it significant, significantly better or not? Because this is one point. This is even less than one point. And so how big is one mother point to understand if it's actually important to do that? And before going into that, um, there is a main difference in using or not using these variables because calendar data is, okay, 100% certain. There's no error depending on how far you go in the shift. Population, resident population is almost zero because it, I mean, it can be used the same, you can literally use the same number for a prediction that is weekly or monthly. It doesn't really change that much. While tourists and weather change widely in a month, and tourists can, I mean, the weather sure change, changes widely in a week. So if we exclude that, we gain, um, I mean, a monthly or even yearly prediction horizon. While if we, do, if we include that, then we have to restrict to at most a weekly one. So how big is a map? I mean, one map point. I mean, every. I mean, one map point is one percent different. I mean, if the difference of a map point between two different predictions is one percent of the predicted value, which is basically always less than two point five people. So, for in terms of hospital logistics, it's nothing because I mean, two point five people can be. I mean, if they are, if the average is hundred and fifty, okay getting this kind of error is irrelevant. So we choose to not use them. 
because they, they don't have that much information and we want a um, longer and more stable predictive, predictive horizon. So we choose as a final model the random forest, which is a calendar and version of information and not uh, weather into it. So we can say that in the end, I mean, tourists and weather, it's not that they don't affect the data, but every information they can give to the data is already encoded in the calendar. So we, as an input data, they are superfluous and superfluous and irrelevant. And this is how the predictions look like. So every color is a shift, and this is winter 2022, and we have the, this, I mean, the visible points are the data points, the non-visible ones are the training points, which is data but not predicted, and the bars are the predictions. So the center of the bar is the predicted value, and this is the associated arrow with the prediction. So we can see that the point is in the, I mean, if, if the prediction is correct, it's the point is in the bar, so it's most of the time in the bar, and almost always of the time it's in the double bar, which is quite the arrow. And this is summer 2022, where we can see the same kind of thing. Also, we can notice that, uh, I mean, in summer, I mean, um, of course, in summer it is more stable because there is like a the huge shift of the data. And then we move to another feature of the dataset, which is hospitalization. Because in the dataset, we also have information about what happens to the people when they get to the emergency department. And this is the hospitalization risk defined um, empirically as fraction of the number of hospitalized people over total number of people for a specific age cohort. And you can see that, of course, this goes up with the age. And we can define three types of people depending on their risk to be hospitalized. So we have 15 to 54 low risk, so less than 10%, uh, 55 to 74. Hmm? I just wanted to make a misquotion uh, that you showed me, but that applies to any given time, so it's not like, let's say at any given time, one third of the people over 85 are hospitalized, or is that over a period of time or months or something? Uh, it's the total over the data set. So, at any, so at any given time, one third of the people over 85 are uh, no, I mean, it's not the, um, I mean, it's it, in the end, you will get hospitalized, it's not over, I mean, it's not a dynamic probability when you get to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I mean, the mean is, uh, I mean, the time, I mean, you can yeah. go to the emergency department, and yet you're either dismissed or hospitalized. Mm -hmm. So, wow. okay. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a final output. Yeah, yeah, it's the final output, yeah. <laughs> so one minus that is the fraction of people that get dismissed without any further complication. Mm -hmm. So you have this kind, these three categories, low risk, medium risk, and high risk. Uh, so below 10%, 10 to 20, over 20%. And then we move, here we move to a 24 hour resolution because um, hospitalization doesn't really rely on shifts because you, most of the times it's not immediate that you get hospitalized, but it's more depending on internal logistics to the hospital, or maybe we will wait for the sh on purpose that the shift changes. So it's, I mean, it doesn't really have a meaning in the end if you're getting hospitalized or not in a specific shift, but more about in a specific day that you come in. So we move to a 24 hour resolution, and instead of having shifts, now we have hospitalization risk as different uh, patient cohorts. And using the same model with the same input, we get these results. So we can see that, again, this is the low is better than the high. Again, it's because of the patient number. And on average, we have, again, that the random forest is better. And sometimes, I mean, uh, and we have basically the same kind of discussion that we had before, that all the variables are slightly better, but the slightly is not enough to justify the view. And sometimes, again, we have that it gets even worse when you have variables. And this is due to overfitting, of course. And that's what it. Is the ah, because they, we didn't need to test the baseline here. I mean, because the baseline mm, is useful to say, okay, then the model works. And okay, so this is just a different category from the model, so we didn't test it again with the baseline. Also, because number-wise are almost, I mean, very similar to the behavior of morning and afternoon night shift. And this is, these are again the predictions. So we, I mean, we have that again, we are inside the bars. And of course the errors seem smaller because now 
the data itself is way lower than in the other in the previous plot. And that's for an example. And then to sum up, uh, again, non sensitivity in this for our hospital are more than sufficient to do the prediction. And this is because of the strong seasonality of the data. And because the, the seasonality is so strong to actually contain information about two different weather. So we can just use the resident population and the calendar and calendar data. Random forests are the best algorithm that among the ones we tested. And since we are not using weather or tourist information, then uh, we can have a prediction that has the same accuracy over a month or maybe over a year, over a year, but if over a year we should add like a more prediction error for the resident population. And we show that it also works for uh, age cohorts and not only for the shift. The future step would be, I mean, the first obvious one is to implement that. So uh, develop some kind of inside, I mean, some private app for the hospital to say, okay, then you will get like updated weekly prediction and then you, they can organize the logistics for the, uh, for the hospital itself. Then try, apply the model to different hospitals because, for example, if you apply that for a, in a city that is touristic not only for the summer, then maybe tourist, tourist waves will be relevant and will not be encoded by the calendar. And so you will have that they actually contribute as a different variable. Then extend the model for hospitalization. So adding some queuing feature inside the model to make the patients wait inside and then get hospitalized or dismissed to get the actual crowding and not, ju not just the number of incoming people. And then maybe extend it to inside and to that uh, to actually predict how people move inside the hospital uh, because we soon get to we soon we, uh, we will we get hospitalization data so we can actually see if the crowding proceeds also inside. So that's it. Uh, to conclude, uh, then we we see that uh, in in Palma. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there are, I mean, weather and tourists do not contribute as a separate thing, but we doctors, I mean, doctors and maybe majorities in general have a big enemy here, which is summer. And we hope that the, our data I mean, our model will try to soften it up and try to defeat it so we feel a, a bit separately from this other challenge. Uh, that's it. <laughs> So are there, are there questions?